Today we are taking a look at the two new distilled expansions, Africa in the Middle East and Cask Strength. What is happening, Brew Crew? Now, if you've been watching my channel, then you will know that Distilled was one of my favorite games of 2023. Unfortunately, I did not have an opportunity to do a review, but I can tell you that it's made several of my top games of the year list. So yes, I like Distilled. Uh, so you can imagine I was very excited to hear that they were putting out two new expansions uh, now, both of these expansions are fairly small, so I'm going to be covering them both in this video, but I will include timestamps if you want to jump to specific expansions. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that these expansions were provided by Paverson Games for review. Okay, let's head down to the table for an overview of each expansion, and then we'll come back up and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, this is going to be a shorter overview than normal since I'm not going to go through the full rules for Distilled. Um, I'm just going to cover what's new or different in the expansions. I'm going to start off with the Africa and Middle East expansion. Uh, this one has a lot of the same kind of stuff that you would see in the base game, but focusing specifically on ingredients and spirits from Africa and the Middle East. Uh, for example, there are the new distillery owners which we have here. And each one has their own signature label and their own signature ingredients. It also has new tasting flight cards that feature the spirits from these regions, along with their corresponding spirit labels. And in the back of the rule book, you'll find a handy guide for pairing up the tasting flights with distillery owners to help keep the game balanced, which is something that they also did in the base game that I think was a good idea. There are also new spirit awards, distillery goals, uh, solo goals. We've got new ingredients. new items. And new flavor cards. Probably the biggest change in this expansion comes from the new premium ingredients. Uh, these add a couple of cool new twists. Some of the premium sugars will count as two of whichever sugar type it happens to be. So either fruit, plant, or grain. Uh, this means that for one sugar card, you'll be adding two alcohol cards. There's also the new ingredient in the game. Uh, this can count as any one sugar of your choice. Uh, super helpful if you can manage to get a hold of one of these. Okay, let's move on to cask strength. Uh, this very small expansion adds uh, new distillery upgrades, like the Moonshiner, the Collector, and the Forklift, as well as the cask sales. Now this one is interesting because this one will let you sell aged spirits in the same round that they're distilled. Uh, you Basically, you just won't bottle them, and you'll have to discard the barrel 
So you're basically selling your spirit while it's still in the barrel. Uh, we also have some new flavor cards. Like sandy, mossy, sherried, and husky. Uh, and we also have the new premium ingredients, which these will replace the premium ingredients from the base game. Now these will cost a little bit more, but in addition to helping you earn more money when selling, uh, they are also going to each have their own special ability on the bottom of the card. And the last thing that it adds is the dynamic market deck. Uh, this deck is shuffled up before the game, and the top card is turned over. This card will go into effect the following round. Uh, so you get to see around ahead of time how the market will be changing. It's going to do things like affect the cost of certain types of ingredients, um, or possibly items. And it may also cause the price of the spirits themselves to fluctuate from round to round. And now before starting the next round, you take the top card off of the market deck and set it beside. So this market card is now active, and you'll flip over the next one so you can see what's coming up in the next round. And that's pretty much it for these expansions. Um, all of these pieces are very easy to include and they require little to no additional setup. So that's an overview of the expansion content for both Africa and the Middle East and cask strength. Let's head back up and I'll let you know what I think. All right, so I'll start off with the Africa and Middle East expansion. I think this is a really solid expansion. Uh, it doesn't do a ton to change the game up. It really just adds more variety to the game. Now, personally, I didn't think that Distilled was in any danger of running out of variability. But if this is a game that you're going to play a lot, then this might be an expansion worth picking up. Uh, one thing that... I really like about Distilled is learning about the various spirits and distillation methods uh, used around the world. So I love that the Africa and Middle East expansion adds to that diversity. It also adds some new spirit awards and distillery goals to go along with the new regions and ingredients. And it does mention that if you happen to draw a goal for a region or spirit that's not in your game, you just keep drawing until you get one that is. I like the addition of the wild sugars, um, the ingredient cards that can stand in for any sugar type, although there didn't really seem to be enough of them in the game to make a huge impact. Um, like just about any game with a market, it's very possible that you can get completely hosed by it throughout, and it's kind of exciting when one of these wild sugars shows up because of the flexibility it can provide. Um, I would say that outside of these things though, Africa and Middle East adds a lot more of the same. I don't think it's going to change anyone's opinion of Distilled, but I think that if you like the base game and you like having more, then by all means grab this expansion. Now, moving over to Cask Strength, this is the smaller of the two expansions, but it does a lot more to change the gameplay. Uh, first off, now we've got the Dynamic Market. This is going to change the cost of some ingredients from round to round and also change how much you'll be able to sell your spirits for. Now, normally I'm not too big on event cards, which is essentially what these are, but I am a fan of adding tension to a game. And I may not have liked this edition as much if it weren't for the fact that you could see the cards one round ahead. This turns up the tension beautifully because I can see what the market is like and what it's going to be next round. Do I want to grab those ingredients now because they're going to be more expensive next round? Spirits from Asia are worth extra money next round, and can I get what I need to distill one of them for the extra cash? These aren't huge swings in price either, uh, for either buying or selling, but it's just enough to make you kind of second guess yourself, which I'm very good at doing. Outside of the dynamic market, there's also all of the new premium ingredient cards. Um, essentially these replace the 
sugar ingredient cards from the base game and they add special powers to the ingredients. This was something that I did feel like it was kind of missing from the base game, um, at least in my opinion. The items and distillery upgrades gave you some powers or goals to shoot for, whereas the base game premium sugars really only allowed you to sell the spirit for a higher price. This was fine, but swapping them out with the new premium sugars that add special powers makes every purchase from the market feel more exciting. I'm a little bit more invested in which sugar I'm purchasing and not just trying to grab whatever kind of su fruit sugar is available because I need it for whatever recipe I'm trying to make. Honestly, I will probably only play with the new premium ingredients from now on. Uh, these are the two major changes of the Cask Strength expansion. And while it is the smaller of the two expansions, it does the most to change the feel of the game. I still don't know that it would change your opinion if you do not already like Distilled, but I will say that if you do like Distilled, then I highly recommend grabbing Cask Strength. Uh, it changes things up in some pretty cool ways. Uh, Paverson Games did release Africa and Middle East to uh, retail on February 2nd, so you should be able to find that at your local game store soon. However, they did let me know that Cask Strength would not be available uh, in retail until much later, if at all. It is available uh, for pre-order right now on the Paverson Games website, but we'll have to wait to see if it ends up coming to retail or if it will be exclusively available through their website. All right, so there you have it. Two very good expansions for a great game. Normally, this is where I would let you know that if you like games X, Y, and Z, you might like this, but that doesn't really work in this situation. So I will just say grab Africa and Middle East if you want to add some more variety and grab Cask Strength if you want to tweak the gameplay of Distilled just a little bit. And until next time, let's get another round for the table.